गुरवे गौर चंद्राय राधिकाय कृष्णाय कृष्ण भक्ताय तद भक्ता मंछा कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु पति वैष्णवेभ्यो तवैवास्मी तवैवास्मी नजिमा निपया बिना विज्ञराधे My millions of dandruff, but I'm in a lot of feet of my spiritual master. Young Vishnu Bhad, Astrota Sarsimad Bhakti Prakyan Kishore Sangha. And same millions of dandruff, but I think in a lot of feet of my Shikha Guru. Yesterday, we begin, we begin our Srimad Bhagavad Katha. In that, in the last, we explain Krishna is Adhyay Dhyan Parthatva. But many of you perhaps I do not understand. So, Pridhandi Maharaj will speak shortly and you should give a very good idea. What is Adhyay Dhyan Parta? Om Adinath Mirandasya Gyananjala Shalakaya Chakshu Unmulitam Jena Thasvaya Shri Guru Vaina Maha. I first of all offer millions of millions of dandar pranams unto the lotus feet of my beloved Gurudev. Om Vishnu Pahar Paramahamsa Parirajita Chaja Asto Tarasara Shri Shri Maharaj Shri Bhakti Varanta Narayan Maharaj Kaswami. So Shri Gurudev has asked me to speak on Advaya Gyan Paratattva. The principle of Advaya Gyan. It means that Krishna is one <coughs> and nothing in existence is separate from Krishna. This is the essence of this tattva. And there's one, the verse that we're discussing now, Vedanti tat tattva vedas tattvam yajnanam advayam Brahmati, Paramatmati, Bhagavan, Iti Shabhyate. So when Ganeshji was writing for Vyasadeva, he made a um, contract that Vyasadeva would have to speak continuously, 18,000 verses. So Vyasadeva immediately responded by saying, I will keep speaking the verses and you must keep writing as long as you understand everything that I'm saying. So when he came to this verse, that Krishna is one, yet he's three, then immediately it becomes bewildering to some degree. So yesterday, Shamrani Didi, she described very beautifully the different analogies or the different examples. She described the example of a hill. We see a hill in the distance, and we have an experience of that. We get closer and we can see the trees, we get closer again, we can see the animals and wildlife, etc. So, Brahmati, Paramatmati and Bhagavan. So, the, um, the principle being that Brahmati is Krishna's effulgence. This effulgence actually are the qualities of Gyan and Vairagya. This is what makes up the Brahma Jyoti. Krishna has six qualities, and these qualities of Brahma, of Gyan and Vairagya constitutes Krishna's effulgence. So this is the Chit Shakti principle, and Krishna is the Ishtadeva of the Chit Shakti. And then the Paramatma feature, this is Sat and Chit, everything that is in existence plus Chit which is knowledge. So Chit and Sat. 
And then finally, Bhagavan, the repository of all qualities, the personal aspect, is Sat Chit Ananda. So these principles are um, explained in this way. So, as Shamrani Divi was explaining yesterday, there are three um, uh, challenges, you can say, to this concept that Srila Jiva Goswami he uh, presents. And one is that, um, that there is a difference between uh, in, in Krishna's eyes and his other uh, limbs. So, this is nullified by the fact that we understand that Krishna is, uh, his eyes, he can see with his legs, he can see with his hands, etc. And, and Gyani Yasya Sakalendriya Vritimanti, that all of Krishna's bodily limbs are simultaneously present in each of his limbs. This is difficult for a conditioned soul to understand that this is the meaning of achintya or inconceivable. So this, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? challenge, so to speak, is nullified by that. Thank you. Can you tell something? What is Osvaldi and you have not understood. What about three days, 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 Ram Nishinga or Krishna. Krishna has come in the form of me. All the gopis and all the Brajavasi, they are from Krishna. Gopis are Ladini Shakti of Krishna. And all gopis are Manifestation of Radhika, His Shakti, none different to Krishna. And this world has come from Maya, the Chaya of Chit Shakti. Shadow. See, this is not independent. We are also not independent. We are dependent to the existence of Krishna. This is the main part. Brahma, Paramatma, also related to Krishna. His Padanaka Jyoti is Brahma, our Sakshi, Mandi Man, Sheet, Sata and Sheet, and that is Vikrita, not food. So everything depends on Krishna and we have all come from Krishna. So this is Advaya Tattva, Krishna is Advaya Partha. Now, <coughs> when in the end of Dwapa, Maharshi Vedabhyas, he was in, in festival, yeah. manifestation of Krishna. He divided Vedas, Vedic literature, into four parts. They were very hard to understand. For this, he made Brahma Sutra. But if you 
वन कैनट अंडरस्टैंड टू अंडरस्टैंड ऑल दीज थिंग्स हे मे पुराण उप पुराण साखा पुराण एंड इन दी लास्ट हे मे पंचम वेद महाभारत and he distributed to their his disciples but really he was not happy he was sitting in the samrat pras ashram and thinking what is lacking in me that is atma is not prasanna not satisfied what he looked for but he could not decide and in the main time fortunately his guru devashi narad came there he did sasam dandat pranam to his guru they gave him palm sauce he was the lotus feet of his guru they and he was satisfied and seated then <coughs> nagrishi asked you are like god who has divided with us that taken the essence of all the vedic literature sukti that is brahma sutra he may he explained it in puran <coughs> and pancham bhai but it seems it seems you are not happy then he told gurudev you are tell, telling real i am not satisfied so you will have to see my nafs pause and decide that why and not satisfy by doing so you cannot judge why you are not satisfied but realized guru qualified guru can know and that is why time to time he reminds us he unko dancha to bata the rebukes also but this is his kindness if we are then correcting ourselves okay then to you will go to hell so we should try to understand and follow the words of guru dev bees bas de Vedabhyas was very intelligent, so he told Gurudev, "I must follow you. You should point out where is my loop and hole." And then he told, "You have done so many things, all Purans and everything. In them, we have not decided." Krishna Lila Katha, as you have explained, the Dharma Artha Kamu Moksha, you have given the importance of Dharma Artha Kam and Moksha. You have not explained three past times of Supreme Lord. Even you have not decided who is Supreme Lord. Have you decided? In Vishnu Puran, Vishnu Narayan, you have established. In Shiva Puran, Shiva. In other Purans, Markande and other Purans, Sakti. So, all people reading them, they become in confusion. They cannot decide who is the one, Supreme Lord or. abhis chade so you should 
right to know who is he. Having written that Krishna is Supreme Lord, he is Lord of Lord, Swami Bhagavan has written that he is satisfied by bhakti. Have you written there that ma, ma, though he is Supreme Lord, he is very powerful? But Mother Yasoda binded him. Have you written? Have written that Krishna sitting in the lotus feet of gopis and praying, Naparayam Niravadya Sanjujan. Have you written? Then have you written Gopi Geet, Brahma Geet, Benu Geet? Have you written? The Bira, the Separation mood of gopis, have you told anywhere? Then what you have done? So I don't know all these things. Oh, you should follow Bhakti Yoga. What is Bhakti Yoga? To surrender totally. You should surrender. And you in trance you will see all the sweet parts on love Krishna. From top to bottom. From Dwarka um, from Brajalila, Mapura, Dwarka and all the Gali. Then Narvish went up. And Narkum Das Day. He took samadhi. Samadhi means, you know, I don't know you. I have totally surrendered you. And he was meditating. At once he saw, apasat purusham purna mayanta jada aparsaya. He saw, purna purush. He saw, bhajanda nandan shyam sundar. He saw Mother Jasoda, Nand Baba, Sudam, Suval, all, and especially gopis, Srimati Radhika, Chandrauri and others. And he saw Rosh Panchadhyay, what is written. He saw. And he also saw Brahma Geet, Benu Geet and other things. And after that he went to Dwarka and he married with Oh. All the gopis, Rukmani, Shaktabhama and others. And then how he fought Mahabharata, Yuddha and how his family was ruined. And he was sitting there, Uddhav came and he gave Uddhav Shambhat, which is written in Bhagavad as it is. And then Lokasya Ajanto. Jasamoy to Jiva Manam Tribunat Matam Parvati Monte Anatha Nathanta Kitan Shapi Pati. We know all these things. We know that we are so part parcel of Krishna. We are Chetan Vastu. But why we are entangled in body? Always we, do, we think that I am this body. This is Krishna Maya. If you are doing really bhajan, that has been told before. Vāsudeva bhakti prayojita janyate āsu jñānam vairāgyam ca ahaitika. Really, if anyone is chanting, he is doing a smarana of Krishna and really he is doing shuddha bhakti. Then jñāna and vairāgya. 
all kinds of knowledge will come automatically. And detachment from but why we go down? Why? We see this sannyasi of this cone. They are going down. We should try to escape from criticizing anyone by now. Those is so much. Don't do. Or they try to be tina rapi suni chena taru rapi sahi suna amani na man de na kirtaniya sada. Don't think I know better than anyone. And thus, go on doing nothing. You should all try, we should try that this body is not myself, this is the bag of urine, stool, and other things. I should do for Krishna. Whatever we do, if Guru is qualified to please Him and Krishna, Mahaprabhu. Nityananda Prabhu, then, then very soon you will be alive and your bhakti will be advanced. So, <coughs> Narada is telling about his past history to Vyasdev. Gurudev must tell. It is better to tell his own history, how he advanced in Krishna consciousness, than epics, stories and other things. So, what we told? Tahu. Oh, we have a name. You can do. No more Vishnu Pada. You want? It's a letting to. You forget to. Namah. Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimat Bhakti Vedanta Swane Nithi Namine Oh, Vishnu 
understand uh, why he was feeling dissatisfied even though he had uh, 
performed this amazing task of writing all the Vedic literatures, but yet he was not feeling satisfied. And his Guru Dev, Sri Narad Muni, uh, came there to his very ashram and actually pinpointed. He found this, as Guru Dev says, the loophole, the place through which uh, Srila Vyasadev was not understanding what was the cause, and Sri Guru was able to detect the cause. So, Sri Narada Muni began to instruct Sri Vyasadev about his own personal experience in his own life, but this was his previous life. As Gurudev told, that a Guru will actually tell his disciple how, by what process, he himself has attained his state of perfection. So this very interesting uh, narration from the lips of Sri Narada Muni, the Guru of Gurus, Devarshi Narada, who in our universe and in, who, in whose millions of other universes, Sri Narada Muni is traveling and describing the glories of the Lord to all the conditioned souls, liberating conditioned souls, making them his disciples. So many famous personalities, Dhruva, Prahlad, so many in Srimad Bhagavatam are the disciples of Narada. How did he achieve such an exalted position? So he actually told the story in his previous life. Sri Narada Muni was the son of a not very uh, sophisticated lady. She was simply like a maidservant, like a sweeper lady who cleans. But <clears throat> she was the cleaning lady in a temple. And this temple, during the four months in India, when there's the rainy season, generally the great sages and saints, they're traveling and preaching and visiting different parts, different holy places, but during the rainy season, they usually reside in one place. So when Narada Rishi, in his previous life, was only a young boy of five years of age, he was living in this temple because his mother was a servant there. And so, at that time, when the rainy season came, there were four very great exalted sages, personalities, who came there and they began to live there in that very temple premises. Uh, these sages actually came in a kind of disguised form. They were also divine personalities who had descended into this world to give mercy to the conditioned souls. They were the four Kumaras, Sanak, Sanandana, Sanatan, and Sanat Kumar. So these four personalities began to live there, and while they were living there, Sri Narada Muni, as a young boy, he used to come and sit and listen to their Harikata. Just like yesterday we were hearing, the Srimad Bhagavatam was describing the potency of hearing from the lips of a pure, realized Vaishnava and person Bhagavat. So here, these Bhakti Vedantas, these personalities came and began to describe the glories of Krishna. They began to discuss all the transcendental topics of pure devotion to the Supreme Lord. And this young boy Narada, he was very uh, well behaved. He was actually not uh, like a regular child who always simply wants to act frivolously and play and all of this, but he was very well behaved and he used to sit near to these sages and he would constantly listen to their harikata. So these sages became very pleased with this young boy and uh, one day they gave him permission to accept the prasad remnants that they had left on their plates after honoring Krishna Prasad. And Narada Muni described to Vyasadeva that when, by their order, I took this prasadam remnants, this transcendental substance, food stuff, from the lotus mouths of these great sages, oh, immediately I, could, I felt that my whole existence had become purified, and my, my attention, my attraction was drawn towards them. Immediately, everything about them became attractive to me, and I began to completely relish and taste this nectar of their harikata. So these sages, they became so pleased with this young boy Narada, and they blessed him. 
They gave their full hearty blessings to this young boy, and after the end of four months period, <clears throat> they departed from that place and continued with their pilgrimage. At that time, Narada Muni, being such a young boy, and actually he had no one else in the world except his mother. His mother completely looked after him, he had no other relatives or anyone in the world. And his mother one day went out into the nearby forest area, and by the will of the Supreme Lord, uh, she was bitten by a snake, and the poison from that snake uh, took her life. So now, this young boy, Narada, only five years of age, now he saw this opportunity that actually I have no one in this world. But by hearing from these great sages, he began to fully, deeply comprehend the transcendental truth that actually I am an eternal part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, and He is my real relation. So Narada Muni took the opportunity <clears throat> and he left that place, and now he began to wander and to travel throughout the uh, countryside and going through the forests, the dark, deep dark forests. And finally, in a very intense mood, he came into the middle of a forest grove, and this, in the middle of this forest grove, he now uh, tried to understand and remember the instructions that these sages had given him how he can enter into very deep meditation and completely fix his mind and heart on the Supreme Lord, Supreme Personality of Godhead Bhagavan, who was within his heart. So this young boy Narada sat down and completely fixing his whole mind and intelligence, he deeply absorbed his mind in Krishna, meditating upon the Paramatma within his heart. And when Narada Muni was meditating in this way for some time, he became deeper and deeper absorbed and suddenly, by the mercy of the Supreme Lord, he himself gave his darshan within his heart. He appeared to Narada so that internally with his transcendental vision, Sri Narada Muni could directly see the, the beautiful, all attractive uh, Achintya Guna Swarupam, the attractive form and qualities of the Supreme Lord within his own heart. And when this took place, Sri Narada Muni described that all ecstatic symptoms came in my body, tears were flowing from my eyes, trembling came, and I was completely overwhelmed by this experience. And then, just as that form had appeared so suddenly, immediately that form disappeared from my vision. And then I became greatly distressed, Narada told. I now began to think, how can I again see that beautiful form of the Lord? He was so kind to appear before me, and he became somewhat desperate. He sat down again in the same way, and again he began to attempt to bring by meditation this form of the Lord to his vision. But then Narada Muni could understand that this was not happening again in the same way, and suddenly the Supreme Lord Himself spoke to him. And Sri Narada Muni was able to hear the voice of the Lord telling him, My dear Narada, I must inform you that I have given you my darshan just this one time to give you my special mercy so that you would be able to have in your life an absolute determination that you will one day again be able to see me in the future. But it is actually not possible for anyone to see me until they have become completely purified and freed from all material desires and fixed in pure bhakti to my lotus feet. But I have given you this one-time vision just to increase your desire and your determination. And then this voice disappeared. Sri Narada, he, at that moment, he felt so much gratitude and he fell on the ground uh, weeping and praying, paying his Dandavat pranams to the Supreme Lord and glorifying Him. And now Sri Narada Muni understood what was his life's mission. And for the rest of his life in that body, Sri Narada Muni, he traveled everywhere constantly chanting and singing the glories of the Supreme Lord 
performing pure bhakti. And Narada described to Vyasadeva that at the end of that life, I became completely purified and fixed in the Supreme Lord. And then just as uh, lightning and illumination appear simultaneously, suddenly I attained my spiritual form as Narada, that you see me now. So Sri Narada Muni told this story to Vyasadeva and told that from that time I took birth in the next millennium as the direct son of Lord Brahma, Brahmaji, the topmost demigod creator of the universal planetary systems. I took birth as his son and from that moment I am continuously chanting uh, the Supreme Lord's glories, traveling all throughout the universes and all throughout the creation. And in this way, I'm completely ecstatically absorbed in chanting and hearing the glories of the Lord, His name, form, qualities, and pastimes. So Sri Narada Muni instructed Vyasadeva in this way, to give Vyasadeva an understanding, what is the power of Sadhu Sangha? Just by the association of these great sages, even though he was unqualified and low-born, he would, did not have any high position in material society, the son of a maidservant only. But by the power and potency of the pure Bhakti Vedantas, those who are the transcendentally realized souls, servants of the Supreme Lord, by hearing from their lotus mouth the, the message of the Srimad Bhagavatam, he attained this very exalted position. And by taking the remnants of their Mahaprasad, his whole existence became purified. So the Srimad Bhagavatam and the message of Bhagavatam teaches that there is no other qualification required, only that one sincerely surrenders at the lotus feet of the pure Vaishnava and hears from him submissively, serves him and follows his instruction, and then it is possible for everyone to attain a divine transcendental position like Sri Narada Muni. So there are so many teachings in this narration of Bhagavata. First, we see a strongly belief in Guru, Guru Dev. And we should totally try to follow his words and teachings. Second, Vasna Pada Bhuli or Bhakta Pada Jal, Bhakta Bhakta says eighteen sadhanir bal. You should know, remnant of Vaishnava, Prasadam, also Harikatha, both Bhakta Pada Bhuli, the feet dust of Vaishnava, and uh, feet water. With a strong belief, if he will take, or you are not will go away. And Ruchi will come. What Ruchi? Sadha, Harikatha, and then Nishtha, and then Ruchi. Test will come. If test comes in any hall, what becomes? No chance of going down. Unless he does aparad, Vaishnava aparad, Guru aparad and others. He will advance. So we should try to take all these things and try to follow their advice. You can tell the Sambad of Devhuti and Kapil. Kapil. Om Ajnanam Chimirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksurum Militam Yenatasma Sri Gurave Nama Srila Gurudev has ordered me to speak some words about the conversation between Devabhuti and Kapiladev. First, who is Devabhuti? Devabhuti is the daughter of Swayam Bhuvamanu the uh, emperor 
of the entire universe. She was married, she was given by her father to the great sage and mystic Kardama Muni. And although she was the daughter of the emperor, she forgot all of her prestige and served her husband very faithfully without any false pride. Because of her sincere service, she hadn't been taking care of herself at all, or bathing or doing anything for her own sense gratification, but always serving and performing great austerities. So, uh, because the original reason why they were married was that he could get a divine son who is the personality of Godhead. Cardinal Muni uh, created a city, a palatial city in the sky, and for many years they traveled around. He had such great powerful mystic cities that he was cre able to create a thousand maidservants in the water under a transcendental lake that was created for him by the Lord himself. And Devabhuti went in that lake, and just as one can live in a house of air, by mystic power she was able to go into that house of water and get all beautified in order to uh, travel around in that city palace with her husband. First they begot nine uh, daughters who married great sages, the son of Lord Brahma. And then uh, Kardama Muni was ready to leave home and take the renounced order of life, but she prayed to him that I must have some, something from you. So he said that you are now the shareholder of all of my devotional activities. And to Devahuti and Kardama, the great personality of Godhead himself, Kapiladev, took birth. When Kardama Muni was doing austerities, the Lord appeared to him and Kardama prayed, Please give me a wife who is so great and also equal to me in character. And the Lord said, Because you've come to me for the fulfillment of your desires and not when anywhere else, you'll get more than your request. So not only will you get such a qualified wife, but I myself will come as your son. So Lord Kapiladev appeared as the son of Devahuti, Kardama left home and took the renounced order of life, and Devahuti remained in the palace, though very austere, and she was taken care of by her now grown son. Now she's inquiring from him, I'm suffering due to ignorance and not knowing who I am or how I can connect with supreme happiness. Please give me some instructions. So Kapiladev, as Srila Gurudev said, there are so many beautiful instructions in Srimad Bhagavatam. And Kapiladev gave her so many instructions about bhakti, about the qualities of the pure devotee, about the creation, about how to meditate on the Lord, and about association with pure devotees. The main instruction of Lord Kapiladev is about this association with pure devotees. Satam prasangam mamavirya sambhido bhavanti hritkarna rasayana katha Association with sadhus is such a wonderful thing that by hearing the words emanating from their lotus mouth this acts as a tonic a tonic to free one from all anartas and all uh, entanglements in material existence. Bhavanti Hridkarna, as soon as the sound vibration of the pure devotee goes into one's ear, then by the mercy of that pure devotee it enters the heart and then one gradually develops through the various stages of bhakti. That is, Shraddha Ratir Bhakti Anukramishati, step by step, as we sing in the mornings, Sri Guru Charana Padma Kevala Bhakti Sarma. 
all stages of bhakti, the abode of all those stages of bhakti is the pure devotee. So by associating with him and hearing from him, Mamavirya Sambito, about my very heroic activities, then all that is inauspicious of the heart is destroyed, and one advances through the stage, as Gurudev said, from Shraddha to Anartha Nivriti, Nista Ruchi, Asati Bhav, and then Prema Bhakti. Lord Kapiladev taught his mother so many things. He taught her about the creation, how Sri Krishna takes the form of Karanadaksha Vishnu and Angani Yasya Sakalendri of Ritimanti, all the parts of Krishna's body and all the parts of his expansion's body can act for any other part. So simply by his glancing, creation comes about. By his glancing, the, um, the material nature, which is unmanifest, starts manifesting into the three modes of nature, false ego and goodness, false ego and passion, and ignorance. From false ego and ignorance comes the uh, element, sound, ether, and from that, Lord Kapil explains how from that glancing, touch comes, and touching mixed with the air comes a more gross element, and each element that is manifest by the Lord's glancing, mixed with time and material nature, carries with it all of the qualities of the previous elements. And then the most developed element, earth, carries with it the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Lord manifests as the deity form, as sadhun, apparently in material qualities but without material qualities, and by worshipping that form of the Lord, one attains Krishna Prem, if it's under the guidance of the pure devotee. Then Lord Kapiladev also explained about meditating on the Lord within the heart. He explained how that Lord is the size of the thumb, although not a material form. He's transcendental. And that form, if we meditate on his different limbs, beginning from his lotus feet, gradually coming up to his lotus face, then we become free from all material desires and develop a desire to serve Sri Krishna alone. He explained that on the Lord's lotus feet, at the bottom of the Lord's lotus feet, are many signs, many symbols. And one of those symbols is a thunderbolt. And a thunderbolt has the quality to shatter mountains. So, if one meditates on the Lord's lotus feet, then the mountain of sins and the mountain of dirty thoughts within the mind is all shattered. Then Lord Kapilade goes up step by step discussing the um, thighs, the calves, the waist, the chest, which is the abode of the Supreme Goddess of Fortune, his hand symbols like the club and the chakra, the chakra which is the source of all universe and the supreme vision by which one sees the Lord, the mace which destroys all demons and all demonic elements. Then Lord Kapila comes to the Lord's lotus face and he explains how by meditating on the Lord's eyebrows and his glancing, one can become free from lust and diseases of the heart. So, in this way, Lord Kapila is teaching many, many subjects. He's teaching also the qualities of the pure devotees, how they're tolerant, how they're friendly, karunika, how they're merciful, how they're equal to all. And he also explains about bhakti, the uh, qualities of bhakti and the stages of bhakti and how one can, by developing bhakti, how one can become detached from matter. The whole purpose of explaining all the different elements and the qualities of elements is to detach us 
to see that I'm not any of these material elements, but that I am spirit soul, part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So in this way, Kapila Dev is gradually teaching his mother more and more. Then, it came to a time when Kapila Dev himself was ready to leave home. And when he left home, his mother, although already very austere and renounced, now she became much more renounced. And she practically stopped eating, or bathing, or doing anything. And she became very lean and thin, and just completely absorbed in the Lord. So this is a very, very important conversation the sambad or conversation between Devahuti and Kapiladev. It completely uproots